and uh, welcome all. It is always an honor to host all of you. I'm seeing uh, most of us are in and um, we are uh, excited of today's uh, lesson. But before we start off, I would uh, 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 introduce this meeting with a word of prayer and then I will give the meeting to, to Nancy. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity today, yet another Wednesday. Lord, uh, this far you've brought us, and this far we are ready to serve you, even as we protect life and property. Thank you for uh, protecting us through our work, and thank you for leading us uh, in the right path to take. Lord, even as we sit in the 45 minutes uh, lesson led by uh, James, uh, Mr. James, we ask you that you uh, give us a listening ear and uh, we get to understand what he says. We ask you that you help the uh, uh, internet technology to, to stay stable so that we can stay glued to the class. We pray all this trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Back to you, Nancy. Amen. Thank you, Jose. Um, welcome, everybody, to Africa Fire Missions virtual training here on August 19th, 2020. Um, we are so glad you've joined us. Um, AFM volunteers and community volunteers make this training possible. So we are, are so grateful to our trainers who are volunteers. Um, we are so grateful to our producers uh, who are volunteers as well for Africa Fire Mission. Um, you'll see in these trainings occasionally, um, Amelia and Shandy, who are both with us today, um, will be helping to produce these trainings. So um, we're so excited to have um, all of you with us as well. Um, these trainings could absolutely not be possible without you. So a couple of details, the training is provided free of charge, but does not provide a certain certificate of attendance at this time. Um, however, we are making the trainings available. The recordings are available on our website, as well as the training materials. So those will be posted within the next 24 hours. And I will post the link in the chat to the training. But if you've been attending, it's the same link as it was before. You'll go to Africa Fire Mission slash training, and you'll be able to find the materials there for you. So um, we will ask you to do an evaluation at the end of the course and we'll send you the link. But again, if you've um, participated in the trainings before, it's the same link as you've used before. So you can um, just go back to that and complete this week's evaluation. So thanks everybody for being here and I'll turn it back to Jose for uh, the rest of the introduction. All right. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, as Nancy has said, um, we are happy to host you as Africa Fire Mission. And uh, uh, we are joined with Amelia and um, Shandy. They're in the background, and uh, they're the people who are going to be, will be working together towards uh, assisting us attend the class. So I've known James Mwangi for uh, quite some time. And uh, I remember uh, Mr. James as, as my instructor, as my teacher, and also as, as, as my morning, my morning uh, instructor, the person who wakes you up in the morning and, and takes you up for the morning run. But also I remember James as uh, a practical person who instills a lot of uh, discipline in you. So I approached James and I requested him to, to talk to us about uh, self-breathing apparatus because I remember my first time uh, just seeing that uh, equipment, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't think my face can fit in that, in that gadget. But he put so much confidence in me, just like a two-year-old boy. And uh, right now it's taken to nothing. So I was really humbled to have James come and just say, yes, I'm going to do the training for you. And uh, he actually said, I'm going to do it for free. Even before me saying that we don't charge, he was ready to do it for free. 
So without further ado, uh, I'd want to introduce James uh, to take us through the lesson as our, as our train of, 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 of today. And uh, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, bring it on. All right. So uh, I welcome everyone to today's session. Today's session will be talking mostly about Kiba and Pespis. So uh, thank you so much, Mr. Hosea. We are joined with people from all over the world. So one of them is Mr. Hosea. We have Amelia Smith. We have Sir Errol and Nancy Moore, and many more of them who join us. So I welcome you all for today's session. And if you have any question concerning Skiba and Thespis, please do us so and please enjoy to ask any question. Back to you, Mr. Joseph. So uh, I would like Nancy Mo to put on the slides so we can start our sessions for today. So uh, today we'll be going through with our self-breathing apparatus. And as we all know that uh, self-breathing apparatus, it's an equipment that allows us to use it at a fire ground to maintain a honorable safety measure. And uh, as we know, we all have our objectives. Remember, we have one myth, and this myth is that when we enter into a building that is full of smoke, or that we as firefighters may come out. Our objectives of the day, one will be to list the conditions that require respiratory protections or self-breathing apparatus. Such conditions are these, like a area with high temperature, an area with smoke, an area with particles that are not suitable for us to enter without a skiba. Our second objective of the day or today will be describe the difference between an open circuit breathing apparatus as the ones that we are having and circuit closed breathing apparatus. Those are used for long extended operation and more so to help people who are in minor areas or doing mining rescues. Lastly, but not least, will do describe when a supplied air respirator is used. A supplied air respirator, most of the time, you'll find that it's used in confined spaces. A confined space, you just need to go in with a face piece and a tube that is supplying you consequently with oxygen. Probably the next objective of the day will be to list the conditions that require respiratory protection. Uh, please, Nancy, the next slide. So we'll also describe the limitations of skiba. Those are the disadvantages that we have with the skiba. And we'll see that one of them it does not give you a lot of time. The second one will be able to describe the physical and psychological limitation of skiba. The physical one of it, you'll find that the skiba itself is so heavy that on carrying it, it adds a bulk to your body. Psychological you'll find that those people who are catastrophic, by the term catastrophic, we're meaning phobia to confined spaces, then they will not be able to wear a skiba at those situations. Then we'll talk of, list and describe the major components of a skiba. One of the major components of a skiba that we'll be having around is a pass, personal alert safety system that before you enter into any building, a commercial one or a building of any type, before you enter, your pass should be on. We have two different types of pass. One is integrated, that is built together with the system of the skiba, and a one that is separated, like the one that I'm holding on my hand, that is built different. So when you enter, it will provide you with safety when a fireman goes down. Then we'll have to describe the skiba that can assist the user in air management. Nancy, next slide, please. So we'll also describe the pathway. The pathway we are talking of a skiba as a whole component. As you can see, for those within Nakuru County, in front of you is a skiba, and it has a pathway from the shut-off valve 
that is coming from the cylinder to the shut off valve, from the shut off valve to the airline supply, from the airline supply to the regulator, from the regulator to the first piece, and finally into the lungs and out to the atmosphere. We'll explain the skip breathing technique. While working, we will need you to maintain the amount of air that is inside there for a sufficient amount of time. The skipper can only allow you a time of 30 minutes, 50 minutes, and 60 minutes. They are there. But for today, we'll be able to see the ones that can allow you to work for a minimum of 30 minutes. And then we'll list the complete sequence of donning. All right, Nancy, next. So in our introduction of today's, we say that PPE protects the body against limited amount of heat. And uh, SCIBA allows firefighters to enter smoky and toxic areas and provides respiratory protection for limited time. Next, please, Nancy. So as we all know, so today's session, while we're starting it, I would like to start it with a joke, all right? So I'd like all of us to wash our hands since we know that it's Corona period, all right? All of us, from wherever you are, those who are watching, please wash your hands from where it is. Uh, as you wash your hands, draw what we call a camera, all right? With a camera, put it closer to your eye. A camera, all of us, a camera. We call it a camera, all right? How big is the object that is in front of you? I will assume that the, big, the project, the picture in front of you is so big, all right? So with it, draw away, zoom out, zoom out, all right? The object becomes smaller. So with your camera, be it a Canon, be it a HP one, be it any type of phone that you have, even an ITEL one, all right? So we'll repeat, do, I will say these words, do as I say, not as I do. I will say again, with your camera, do as I say, not as I do, all right? So hope each one of us is up to case with us. Now, Swahili, wanasema apa Kenya, fanya nnavyosema, sivyo nnavyofanya. Sawa, sawa. Kamu wapata kuniona basi, camera on, everyone with his camera on, anywhere point, eh? Do as I say, not as I, not as I do. Everyone camera is on? So, uh, camera on. Touch your cheek. Mr. Hosea, your cheek is not over there, all right? So your cheek called I want cheek. In the chin, your cheek is over here. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> all right? This is your cheek, all right? This is your chin, guys, all right? Those who are joining, hope you have enjoyed. We take on with personal alert safety system, and we'll find that it's an electronic device that sounds a loud signal if a fire. If, if you are motionless for more than a set of period, that is a period of 30 seconds, then the pulse will activate itself. We'll be able to see the part activating itself when we're doing our practical session. And there is a part that will be able also to integrate the system and see if it is not activating itself, what can you do so that you can activate it? Next slide, Nancy. So for today, we'll talk about respiratory protection. And what do you understand by the term respiratory protection? We'll say that we are entering into interior atmosphere of burning buildings. It's considered immediately dangerous to life and health. And in short form, we'll say IBLH, immediately dangerous to life and health. So we as firefighters must be proficient using SCIBA before engaging in interior fire suppression activities. We know that the SCIBA is so expensive. And for one to use it, one must practice 
completely so that to become coefficiently with it. Next slide, please, Nancy. <laughs> so respiratory hazards that we come along as the five fires. One of them is smoke. We have three major components. And with these three major components, one of them that we'll be talking today is smoke particles. Smoke particles are produced as a result of incomplete combustion. As a result of incomplete combustion, we'll have some particles that have burned completely and burned completely, and the ones that have burned completely. And in thus, if you became, or our PPE will not be able to provide sufficient respiratory protection, then you will inhale a particle. And if a particle you become to inhale it, then it traverses itself into the lung system, and probably you may die of any condition alongside our cones. The next thing is the smoke vapors into the three major components. The smoke vapors, we'll be able to see that with smoke vapors, heat produces combustion. You can see even in your homes, while you're cooking or you're preparing a hot meal, there's some steam that is released, all right? The steam that is released, that's now we're talking of the vapors. And then we talk of the toxic gases. Toxic gases comes in three forms. A, we talk of carbon monoxide. With carbon monoxide, we'll talk about it as a result of insufficient or incomplete combustion. When carbon monoxide is produced, then if you inhale, it comes or displaces from the hemoglobin, hence forming carboxy hemoglobin, and the chances of surviving are very minimal. Then we have hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen cyanide is produced from plastic products that burn. It's a form of an aquatic gas that if you inhale, and for some time you have been inhaling it, then it will render you unconscious. Final, but not least, we talk of phosgene gas. A phosgene gas is a gas that is released as a material when we have burning building materials, all right? So in a building, you'll have a sticker, in the, the same same building, we'll have a TV, we'll have wood, all right? We have plastic products. At the end of the day, if all of them burn and we have an incomplete combustion, they'll produce a phosgene gas, hence rendering you guys into an unconscious state. Please, next slide. So the respiratory hazards of fires, when there is a fire, we'll talk of oxygen deficiency. And with oxygen deficiency, we'll say it occurs in two ways. And one of the first ways of oxygen deficiency, when there is a fire production in a building, the fire tends to consume the oxygen in that building, hence reducing the available oxygen. And two, fire produces gases that displace oxygen, all right? So when oxygen is displaced from that environment, you will find yourself that in a normal building, 21% of oxygen, room air, wherever you are inside that vehicle viewers, inside that room that you are in, you'll find that you can be able to breathe in 25, 21% of atmospheric air. But what if it happens and there is a fire? then it will be reduced to 17%. Hence, when you are breathing 17% of oxygen, it will interfere with judgment and coordination of the muscle control. So you'll find you'll start doing wrong judgment. Hence, if you are a firefighter inside the building, we do not require you to do a wrong judgment. Then we talk of 12%. With 12%, you'll experience headaches, and dizziness. And if so, we as firefighters enter it into buildings that have as less as 9% oxygen. In that environment, if you get to breathe that oxygen, it will render you 
unconsciousness. And that is the point where you'll find if you are unconsciousness, for more than 30 seconds, the pass itself, is when we're talking of pass, P stands for personal, A stands for alert, S stands for safety, and the last S stands for system. So it's a personal alert safety system that will enable you or will help you in a condition that there is low oxygen for consumption. Last but not least, if an environment that is having 6% of oxygen, next or the worst will happen is respiratory arrest, where you go completely and you cannot breathe, or cardiac arrest, and finally, we will talk of death. Remember, an injured firefighter is a useless one. Okay? So we, we cannot be able to give us anything at that moment. Then, next please, Miss Nancy. So, with the respiratory and, hazard. And just of fire, to interrupt for one moment, I just want to be mindful of the, for you to be mindful of the time. If okay. there's some slides that you'd like me to skip so we can make sure we get the demonstration. All right. So respiratory hazard of fires will have increased temperatures. While we're having increased temperatures, we inhale superheated gases produced by a fire can cause severe burns of respiratory tract. And we'll see here in Kenya, one of the fires that probably people have inhaled in gases, superheated gases. We have one that happened in Moi, Moi International School, and we have another one that happened in Sachangwan. Those are back, Sachangwan probably back in the 2000, 2012 or 2009, and probably we have the other one that happened in Moi. Girls were one of the ladies who were stressed in the others inhaled a superheated gas and did not manage to succumb to them. Next slide, please. So other toxic environments. Firefighters will encounter toxic gases or oxygen deficiency in atmospheres, many emergency situations. One of these emergency situations include hazardous materials releases, confined spaces, or below-grade structures. When you're talking of below-grade structures, we're talking of pits person has fallen into a pit and we are called for a rescue, we'll have to rush in and help that person in that below grade structure. Next slide. So conditions that require protection, skiba must be used. A condition that require protection, skiba must be used. In enclosed areas where there is a smoke, during overhaul until the air has been tested. Whenever toxic gases or oxygen deficient atmosphere is possible, remember, during overhaul until the air has been tested, safety of CISA is the one to tell you the air is safe for you to remove your skiba so that you can breathe in. Remember, we have a golden rule. Always assume that the atmosphere hazardous. Always assume that the atmosphere is hazardous. Next. So types of breathing apparatus today will look mostly into the one that you are having in front of you, people of Nakuru, will, or the ones who are watching from the slide will have open circuit skiba. An open circuit skiba is used for structural firefighting. The air that is inside it is an air that we breathe normally, that is usually compressed and placed inside the cylinder so that when we go inside the buildings, we do not go with pure oxygen. Remember, pure oxygen is good and sufficient for supporting fire. Exhaled air is released into the atmosphere finally after you have breathed in and breathed out through the Please. Any question up to that moment? Anyone with a question? Next yes, slide. I have one. Yes, Mr. Atman Bacha. Hey, how are you once again, first? I'm very fine, Mr. Bacha. Yeah, my question is um, majority of the fire station, they are lacking of uh, this uh, skiba 
uh, the equipment. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, we are facing a lot of uh, issue in the rescue of uh, pit latrine. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe have another idea to support people who to go inside the pit to the train to rescue anyone if you don't have that kind of uh, breathing apparatus? Uh, it may be difficult to go inside, but we're not saying that you leave the patient inside that pit latrine. So if it happens that you do not have a skiba, as other people have, and you have to do a rescue for a person who is inside a pit, it depends, first thing, you need to know what kind of gases are coming in from there. Remember, you cannot go to rescue a person and hence you injure yourself, then there'll be none to rescue at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, we are talking about, I myself, safety comes first before anyone else. Hope I've answered you, Mr. Asman Bachi. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe if additional, you have any uh, other kind of um, sort of artificial material? Uh, probably and you, you have, have to ropes. rescue that someone. Uh, you can use ropes. You can who use. Uh, you can tie at the end of a rope a hook so that you can throw it inside the pit latrine. Because when we are talking of pit latrines, probably if this guy is unconscious, uh, they, we are talking of. How, how long does it take for this person inside that building so that he or she can come out as a survivor or we're just going to rescue a dead boy? Next slide. Okay, thank Next you. Slide. All right. So according to SCIBA standards and regulations, we have a company known as NIOSH. Uh, this company stands for, sets the designs, the testings, and certifications requirements for SCIBA, all right? NIOSH is the one that sets the design, the designs that we have, the bigger ones that can render you for 60 minutes, 50 minutes, and perhaps 30 minutes. And then we have OSHA. OSHA stands for Occupational Safety Health Administration and state agencies. So responsible, for establishing and enforcing regulations for respiratory protection. You will see with OSHA, they will come up with NFPA 1404, NFPA 1500. When you're talking of NFPA, we're talking of National Firefighting Protection Association that has come up with sets of standards that will be helping us protect respiratory protection. Please, next slide. So we'll talk of standards of SCIBA, and one of them is NFPA 1500, that has basic requirements, basic requirements. And NFPA 1404, requirements of SCIBA training, all right? And then we talk of NFPA 1981, requirements for design. Then we talk of NFPA 1981, also performance of the skiba, testing of the skiba, certification of open circuit skiba. So those are the three major ones that are entailed to deal with skiba. And when you're talking of skiba, we say self-contained breathing apparatus. Next slide, please, Nancy. So the limitations or the disadvantages <laughs> on using a skiba will have is limited by amount of air in cylinder. If you're not physically fit, or even if you're physically fit, it's time it's not forever. All right? It's not like you can say, probably if I wake up tomorrow and you're unable to live for that, the whole day you will breathe. All right? For a skiba, if you enter a building, you have to set a time. How long will it take so that I can be able to come out with the casualty? All right? So, these are the considerations. Knowing that you have limited amount of time, you'll have to consider time and effort required to reach destination of rescue. That is one. Amount of air available once destination is reached. Once you have reached the rescue, do I need to move out to the patient or will it be 
sufficient for us to move up. Then amount of time needed to complete task. We have been assigned a duty. Our duty is to enter into a three building store building and rescue two patients. My cylinder has got about 20 PSI. Is it enough for me to go in and come out with the two casualties? Those are the questions that you need to ask yourself. And then amount of time to reach a safe area. Yes, the skiba has already initiated its gong sound, warning you that your air is almost over. Will you be able to move out swiftly without juggling about your respiratory protection? Next slide, please. So limitations, still with the disadvantages. With the skiba that we added weight and bulk decreases flexibility and mobility. Face piece can limit visibility. And those who are, foot, who are phobic to small, small portions or small places, we call them catastrophic, all right? Though they have the phobia of being in small or confined spaces. Then we may have the effect to ability to communicate. Inside a face space, you will find yourself that you cannot be able to communicate and communicate efficiently. May limit hearing inside the face space also because you are covering your whole face. Next, please, Madam, please. So physical limitations of the user. The physical limitations, we're saying, moving with the extra weight of skiba and the PPE requires additional energy, which decreases the air consumption and body temperature. So moving with it, with the whole PPE that you are in, it increases and decreases air consumption. Next slide, please. Psychological. Now we are dealing with the brain part of the disadvantages while wearing a skiba. One of it is breathing through a skiba can be very stressful. And as we all know that the surrounding environment is foreign as well. It's a small space, you know, and foreign, we are meaning that it's a whole building full of smoke. So it's a foreign environment. Everything looks the same, looks alike. For fighters, must adjust to this stressful condition. We as firefighters, we must adjust to this stressful condition. Next slide, please. Nancy? So components of skiba, with me, I have the component. We'll have the frame itself, the component, as a component of a skiba. And in front of you, those who can say this is the frame of a skiba that is complete, the frame of a working skiba. And with it, it contains the harnesses. The harnesses, you can be able to tie them around you, around the shoulder and the waist part. Okay. Nancy, next slide. So another component of a skiba. It's an air cylinder holding breathing air from the skiba. Remember the breathing air is the one that we are usually breathing. Eh? So same have dual, dual pressure. And when you're talking of, apart from that, with it, it has a regulator that is attached to the, that skiba, to the face piece. This is the regulator that you attach to the face piece. This is an old form of regulator. We have new ones. So these, to the old days, they used to call, refer to them as cigagomas, the heavy duties one, all right? The regulator assembly controls flow of air. So you can turn it on, you can turn it off. According to the slide, you can see there's a red part. And the red part on the regulator, we refer to it as a patch valve, that you open it when you feel inside the face piece, it's full of steam or the sweat enough. So it works as an AC, it reduces it, becomes clear again, you turn it off 
and you can be able to continue with your operation inside the building. So opening the valve and then donning the skiba, attaching the regulator to the face piece. So with the face piece, we have one that will be able to show you where we attach it. This is one of the face piece. And this is where we attach, we get to attach the regulator and it gets to release the air to the face once you have done full compact of the skiba. Next slide, please. So regulator assembly contains a pressure gauge. With a pressure gauge, we are saying that <clears throat> most of the time, if the regulator does not have a pressure gauge, then you'll find that the cylinder itself is the one with the pressure gauge, all right? The cylinder will be initiating. If you open it, it will tell you the amount of air. So it will tell you the amount of air in terms of PCI, all right? That is pound square inch, okay? And then NFPA requires Skiba to include end of time service limit indicator, EOT or low air. And that you'll find that when your air inside the cylinder reach to a minimum of 10, then the gong sound or what we refer to as the EOFTI, end of service time indicator, will start to give you a warning in form of an alarm. Next slide, please. So another component of a skiba, we'll talk of the regulator assembly. Some include paths. And as we all know, we have integrated paths and separated ones, okay? Integrated paths and separated paths from the cylinder. So from the cylinder itself with a separated one, you can be able to see or initiate it before entering into any building. So equipped with rapid intervention crew or company universal air connection, these two companies, it's a company that works a system of body system. Both are two, two. So one will come in once the pass is activated. Once your pass is activated, each member of the rapid intervention crew will rush in to come and rescue the firefighter who is either injured or air supply is gone low. Next slide, please, Nancy. So we have components of face piece. So as a whole, it's a face piece, all right? Or we refer to it consists of a face mask. We call inside it, we have what we refer to as exhalation valves, all right? Inside it, we have what we refer to as exhalation valves. With these exhalation valves, they will only open while we are breathing out. They will only open while we are breathing out. With it, we have the regulator where it will become and it will be able to be, to be placed around the regulator. This is where we place the regulator. Remember, should cover the entire face. When wearing it, it should cover the entire face. So that's why we require that any firefighter should not have probably beards and should not have sideburns. So that if you enter into a building, they may not get burned and or heat may not burn your face. So remember, face piece, you must always, always annually fit test. Next slide, Nancy. So the pathway of the air inside the skiba. So we'll talk of releasing the shut-off valve. And one of the releases of the shut-off valve will get to release the shut-off valve first. So from the shut-off valve, you have released the air from the cylinder. From the cylinder, it goes direct to the supply airline. We refer it to as the supply airline. From the shut-off valve to the supply airline. From the supply airline, finally, into the face piece through the regulator and into our bodies. 
Please, Nancy, the summary. So, we have our summary, and our first, and one of our first summaries that we'll be taking through, we'll say that skiba are expensive, as we all know. It will cost around half a million to acquire even one of the skibas, all right? So you need to be proficient, okay, in using them. So we'll say the two main types of skiba that we have are open circuit and closed circuit devices. And then breathing through a skiba is different than breathing normally, as we all know. Uh, breathing through a skiba is different can, and can be very stressful. Skiba consists of backpack, harnesses, air cylinder, regulator assembly, and a face piece assembly. Air passages through skiba follows a specific pathway. And this specific pathway, we talk of from the shutoff valve to the airline supply, from the airline supply to the regulator, from the regulator to the face piece, and finally into the person and out is released to the atmosphere. Last slide, please, Nancy. So, skip breathing conserves air. When you're talking of skip breathing technique, skip breathing technique, we are supposed to breathe in skip breathing technique for five seconds. Five seconds meaning you breathe in once, without exhaling, you breathe in again, then you release. You breathe in once, do not exhale, breathe in again, then release. You are supposed to do that even while working or demolishing a building or coming out with a person who is injured or rescuing anyone inside a building. Remember that your skiba must be checked regularly. That is, whenever you report into the shift, you check your skiba, and skiba cylinders are refilled via compressors and cascade system. So we're going to take you through the demo of the practical on how to wear a skiba using overhead method. And with me, I have a team of Nakuru County. You'll be able to see them to demonstrate for us how to wear the skiba through overhead method. Welcome all. Hope you'll be able to see from wherever you are the team that will be there. Great. There is the team from Nakuru County. So they'll be the ones demonstrating for us on how to wear the ski bar all through using court method. Uh, for a start, they will start with the, ski, the complete through throwing it back. So we'll do it sequentially. Then each one of them will be practicing. They will be showing us how it is done, simple. And then we're going to introduce speed so that we can be able to see how it's done when actually the real scenario now takes place. It's, I'll, I'll just be explaining what they'll be doing as they will be doing. We're good to go, guys. So uh, we'll start in the next three, two, one. We don't. So that is the overhead method. They go up, they release the straps, find that they will attach the waist straps. Then the next thing to wear is the first piece. They fit it in. There are others who will release the hood on top of the first piece. On my far left, as you can see from where you are said, that those ones hood will be able to, to release the hoods on top of the first piece. The helmet, the helmet, the gadget that you place on top after you have placed the hood. Then you pick the gloves and go up. As you can see, most of the members are already up, breathing in and exhaling out the air. So our last team member will be attaching his regulator. So now they're doing the skip breathing 
technique, all right? I'm breathing in slowly. At that, at that moment from wherever you are, hope all of you can be able to see. And if there's any question, probably from this point you can ask. Anyone with a question? So that is what we call doning. Then we'll go doffing. And doffing will do the reverse. We'll start from the helmet, from the gloves, and then to the helmet, the regulator, and back. Now we, the team is doffing. So uh, now we're going to introduce a little bit of speed. And we'll be able to see now when the real action takes place, how we do it, when they respond. And uh, we get to save lives while doing our heavy duty with the disadvantages of wearing the skiba, physical ones, psychological ones, challenges from home. And we are able to save lives. Um, Jose, if you would uh, maybe wrap us up here. Uh since we seem to have lost them. Yeah. Uh, sorry for that. Wow. It was really an interacting session right there. <laughs> and uh, we really thank James for uh, actually showing us uh, how to don and doff, and also basically the components of the skiba and uh, how, how to do it. Well, uh, for me, the lesson is more about a refresher and I've learned so much, especially on the skip breathing. Uh, you know, when you enter the a fire scene, there's a lot of panicking you do. So you, you forget even about breathing, I mean skip breathing, and you tend to, to use all the air that is uh, in the cylinder. So my takeaway for today is basically uh, 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 knowing how, I mean, keep on remind, reminding my head that whenever I put on the face piece, I make sure that uh, I consider the, the skip breathing. So without further ado, I would say uh, thank you very much, James, in absentia. <laughs> uh, he's just, uh, unfortunately, he's just uh, lost his uh, connection. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the in, in, um, insightful class that you've had today. And number two, uh, all this information you can access uh, uh, today's material at our africafiremission.org slash uh, uh, forward slash training. Uh, you can always go there and, uh, and see uh, the information. Uh, do we have any questions in place? I can see Errol in the house. I can see uh, Fire Chief Tosh in the house. If any question is asked, uh, please uh, feel free to help me answer <laughs> in absentia and of James. Jose, I see that Gregory yeah. has had his hand raised for a while. Oh, Gregory, oh. Gregory, do you have a question, sir? Please go ahead and ask Gregory. Sorry, I hadn't seen that raised hand. And James is rejoining us now. Oh, super. Gregory? Hi, guys. OK. Hi, Gregory. I saw your hand up. Please go ahead with that question. Oh, mine is, is not just a question, but it is uh, just a recommendation. And maybe in case of awareness, most of the time when there is fire, there is a lot of uh, chemicals, substances that are produced. And most of the time, firefighters, they don't know which kind of the cars is available. So it is very important all firefighters to know how to use their required PPEs, which is very important. Most of the time uh, of the instances where firefighters are tired because they were uh, acting against the fire or they were, or they were in operation, it is because of the asset through 
breathing or in inhalation. So it is very important all firefighters, even those who don't uh, have required BP, it is very important to keep this in mind because it is very important. Thank you, guys. Wow. Thanks, Greg, for the, for the comment. I've uh, seen that uh, and uh, James is back on air. I, and uh, I can see that they're actually doning. Let's log on to uh, and see what they're doing. James, do you have sound again? Oh, he's connecting. Looks like. Yeah, he's connecting. There we go. Almost. Yeah. Going through the drills. There you go. Um, while we wait for that audio, because I want you all to be able to um, watch the demonstration there, um, we do want to thank everybody for being here today and taking the time out of your day with us each week. I think today we have the largest attendance. Uh, I haven't quite finished counting yet, but um, we are. So thank you everyone uh, for being here. And we're just very excited about that. Um, please complete the evaluation. Uh, we'll have the recording up later today uh, or tomorrow for you. And uh, look forward to continuing to share. James, back to you. James is still, his phone is still, oh, still trying to connecting. connect to audio. He's still trying to uh, He's there. Okay. He's there. Hello, Mr. Jesse. James, unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Welcome back. back. To, uh, with the team, okay. we have been able to see the video. We had a technical <laughs> error with the network around. Yes. So, probably, yes. We able to see the video of our guys donning the full ski bar and covering the head, ready mm -hmm. to go to session. Back to you, Jesse. Okay. Thank you so much, James. Okay. We truly appreciate you. Any question from the yeah. 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 You can take us through. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just thank you, James, for being here today. Um, everyone is welcome to stay with James and the Nakuru crew for tea and for questions. Uh, we're really glad that you joined us today and um, thanks to everyone. Yeah.